Martian astronaut training happens on Earth, on board the Mars Training Space Station, and ends at the lunar base. If Mars formed life, then life on Earth could have been seeded by life on Mars, making every life form on Earth descended from Martians. Neil deGrasse Tyson. A self-sustaining city on Mars ensures the continuation of life of all species. Elon Musk. It takes three years to train to become a Martian astronaut. Martian survival training happens in the deserts of Earth, putting the astronaut cadets through hostile and life-threatening environments similar to Mars. The skills that the Martian astronauts learn during these expeditions include handling dust storms just like on Mars, rock climbing and rappelling, moving camp each day, taking care of the wounded, making traps, and fending off hostile animals. They have to repurpose hardware and materials, such as turning debris into shelter and turning a broken-down car into a motorcycle. The astronauts also train in navigation, mapping out the terrain and using the moon and stars to locate their position. The Martian survival training also takes the astronaut cadets to the caves of Italy. Living in the caves, the astronauts learn how to live in isolation, confinement, and without sunlight, losing a sense of time, just as if they were living in the darkness of space. An artificial intelligence program named Second Mind, known by the astronauts as Shadow, monitors individual astronauts. Shadow works as an astronaut's personal psychologist and performance coach. During training, the AI begins to understand each individual astronaut. It starts to predict behavior, anticipating the start of a mental shutdown. It understands how each person makes a decision and can take action on behalf of an astronaut, especially during emergencies. Second Mind tracks astronauts in a number of ways, from CCTV cameras with facial emotion recognition to monitoring and analyzing changes in speech patterns. Astronauts also write journal entries that can be analyzed by the AI. When the astronauts are in a neutral state of mind, they are recorded saying a fable called the North Wind and the Sun, creating a baseline. Every three days, the astronauts re-record the passage. The AI looks for changes in speech rate, intensity, and length of pauses. Any changes could mean that something is happening to the mental state of the astronaut. Second Mind can also access data for an individual's sleep patterns and food intake to make assessments. The AI can adjust an astronaut's workload, type of work, as well as manage their interactions with other astronauts based on their recent performance and state of mind. The exploration and colony construction work happening on Mars is split into two areas. A Martian astronaut needs to be an expert in both. All Martian astronauts work as scientists. Scientific work is continuously being conducted on Mars to understand how to build a larger, more sustainable colony. All Martian astronauts also work as engineers. Everything needs to be maintained and fixed from the water supply and fuel stations to the transportation rovers, drilling machines, and science experiments. As new supplies arrive, new structures and robotics need to be constructed and installed. A Martian astronaut needs to be able to learn technical and complex theories, while also getting their hands dirty, fixing and building things. It is in the artificial intelligence-led classrooms where the astronauts learn the cultural and technical side of living in space. Classes begin with Martian history, from the formation of the planet to how the colony was first established. Astronauts are taught about the weather cycles on the red planet and how to identify evidence of fossils and foreign life. They learn about the culture of the Martian colony and even the Creole Martian language. There is a class on open space law and Martian law. Then come the complex technical classes which focus on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths. Classes range from space flight engineering and robotics to celestial mechanics and astrobiology. Here is the list of the technical classes taught by the artificial intelligence. In the virtual reality atriums, astronauts run simulations. The VR headsets run biofeedback, which tracks the brain waves of each astronaut, while cameras monitor facial expressions. The data is fed to an AI, which can adjust the simulation scenarios, difficulty, and stress levels in real time based on the astronaut's performance. Simulations include emergency preparedness drills, such as depressurization of a spacecraft, and skills training, such as operating robotic cranes, robotic solar panel cleaners, and rovers. 
Training the astronauts to be fighter jet pilots and medical technicians happens outside of the classroom. With each Martian crew, there are medical specialists, along with an onboard AI doctor. Medical bays with robotic surgeons can be found at the lunar base and Martian colony. The medical specialists also work as scientists, performing experiments on the astronauts, conducting medicine and radiation analysis, and work with the Martian botanists for nutrition research. But all astronauts need to be trained in becoming emergency medical technicians, in case there are no medical specialists nearby, such as when doing a routine EVA outside of the base on Mars. Training includes stitching wounds, giving injections, and drawing blood. The astronauts are also put through a hospital program, working shifts at different wards, allowing them to get used to the body and learn such things as how to reinflate a collapsed lung and assist with a badly injured person. The astronauts use these medical skills daily while in space as they monitor their own vitals, from daily morning blood analysis and blood pressure checks to inner ear evaluations. All of this data is tracked by the artificial intelligence Second Mind, who updates the astronaut if there are any changes happening. Then there is the skill of being a pilot. The astronauts are trained to fly a supersonic fighter jet. Not only do they learn how to operate thrust and velocity mechanics, they also experience the physical demands and g-forces of flight. Part of the pilot training includes learning how to fly commercial airliners, as well as drones, just like the ones operating on Mars. And all of the astronauts need to be proficient helicopter pilots because of the vertical landings and takeoffs at the lunar base and Martian colony. In the desert snow plains of Antarctica sits the Martian Colony Station, which houses full-scale replicas of the main structures at the Martian Colony, from the living quarters and biodomes to the fuel plants. Robotics are also tested here, being put to the test alongside the astronauts. Here, the astronauts train for the cold conditions on Mars, wearing their EVA spacesuit when venturing out of the base. They also experience power outages, snowstorms, loss of communications, and live in the winter darkness, with no emergency evacuations during these months. The astronauts also start training for their specific missions assigned to them for when they land on Mars, such as biosphere expansion, fuel plant upgrading, and exploration missions. Preparing for life in the weightlessness of space happens on Earth underwater. It takes four to six months to fly to Mars. The Martian astronauts need to maintain and fix the inside and outside of their spacecraft, while also conducting experiments and prepping for work that will be carried out on the surface of Mars. All of this is being done in the weightlessness of space. On Earth, astronauts are trained in large scuba diving pools with a full-scale replica of the spacecraft. The astronauts learn how to monitor their life support. They practice getting from one part to another, avoiding wires and sharp items. They perform they perform tasks such as repairing heat shields or manually rolling out solar panels. They also train to keep track of their tether so as not to float away. Scuba training also prepares the astronauts in knowing, just as in space, the importance of each breath that is taken. An astronaut could have one breath before needing to work on a solution. The Mars Training Space Station, the MTSS, which orbits around Earth, was built by the International Space Partners as a way to train astronauts for the months-long flight to Mars. The Martian astronauts spend seven months training on board the MTSS. The design of the space station is based on a Mars Starship transporter, which transfers astronauts to Mars. Unlike the historical International Space Station, the MTSS and the Starships both have open spaces. To make sure that the astronauts do not get stuck floating in the open spaces, their onboard crew suits have built-in micro canisters which are topped up daily. These act as micro thrusters, a life jacket for living in space. The main working areas are a number of science labs which are arranged around the station. All astronauts work on science experiments during their time in space. There is even a science platform on the outside of the space station to perform experiments in the vacuum of space and to collect micro-meteorite samples. There are two types of libraries on board the MTSS, one for work and one for leisure. The work library houses all of the documents, manuals for space systems, and research papers, all of which can be downloaded to an astronaut's personal computer terminal. There are also chambers where the astronauts can go and study and work privately. 
the astronauts spend most of their free time in the leisure library. Here, the astronauts can download such things as books, TV shows, documentaries, music, and online classes. There are small rooms where a group of astronauts can watch a movie together or play card games. Other activities which the astronauts enjoy doing in their free time include sending messages to Earth, journaling, and spending time in the virtual reality atriums. On board, there are a number of work and leisure-based virtual reality theaters. The work and training VR halls are used to train the Martian astronauts in new skills, give refresher classes and simulations, and perform weekly emergency preparedness drills. In the leisure virtual reality halls, the astronauts can have immersive experiences playing video games. They are also able to simulate realistic environments of nature. The astronauts are trained to get used to living in the virtual world, as it helps with their well-being during the transfer when they are flying further away from Earth, and also later when they are living on the lifeless planet of Mars. Astronauts can lose up to 2% of bone and muscle mass a month living in weightlessness. Even the lower gravities of the Moon and Mars weaken the astronauts' bodies. There is a mandatory two and a half hours of exercise each workday. Saturday is a half day and Sundays are off. The astronauts get two hours of personal free time before bed. Another reason for all of the exercise is cognitive performance. Astronauts perform tasks with fewer mistakes after doing a period of exercise. Ground Control and AI Second Mind test the astronauts every two weeks using puzzles to see if there are any changes to their cognitive performances. Exercising also acts as a mental break from all of the heavy mental work the astronauts are performing during the day. When the astronauts land on Mars, after living in weightlessness for months, they will require a two-week recovery period to acclimate to the Martian gravity, which is a third of Earth's. A rehabilitation center on Mars performs checks on the newly arrived astronauts and pushes them through the Martian physical therapy. Walking on Mars is different. Because of the lower gravity, there is more of a hopping action, which uses the inner core muscles more than when walking on Earth. There are 320 astronauts being trained at the lunar base, each one training for different Martian missions. Missions such as fuel plant expansion, in-situ harvesting and biodome construction, and surface exploration. On Luna, the astronauts train in vertical landing, driving on the surface, EVA drilling and mining, drone and rover piloting, habitat construction, and fuel production, with week-long expeditions living in the 12-wheeled mobile rover habitat, a space RV. It takes two and a half days to reach the lunar training base. There are three core engineering talents that are currently needed at the Martian colony. These talents are mining engineers, agrobotanist farming personnel, and habitat and construction engineers. These engineers are all going through their final training at the Luna base. On Mars, the agro-astronauts work closely with the habitat engineers during biosphere construction, expansion, and upgrading. The agro-personnel also deploy the farming equipment and robotics. They continually monitor the food being grown as well as perform experiments. Tests are conducted on the new seeds sent from Earth, and they are preparing and building a center that will house a future shipment of the first fishes to live on Mars. The plants that are grown in the Martian biospheres are also used to make a glue, a polymer, which is mixed with the Martian loose soil, the regolith, to create a building material for the Habitat 3D printers. The Habitat and construction engineers work on all of the structures on Mars, from biospheres and fuel plants to landing launch pads, solar farms, and residential habitats, and are preparing for the future delivery of the first boring tunnel digger. Their work also entails repairs, dust storm mitigation management, and radiation materials exposure experiments and monitoring. These engineers are the ones managing the Hassle 3D printers, which build the airtight structural shells that act as a shield against radiation and micrometeorites. The 3D printed shells are reinforced with inflatable interior flexible domes. The mining engineers work on turning the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the ice water found on Mars into methane fuel, oxygen, and water. They also mine the Martian soil for the 3D printers. The mining engineers are specialists in operating the drilling rovers and cranes, and spend most of their time working at the Martian Robotic Center. They perform regular EVAs, going outside of the base, deploying for geological exploration survey missions while living in the mobile rover habitat. 
They also set up and maintain the fueling plants and deep cryo storage units and work on refueling the starships for their return trip back to Earth. The colony on Mars is being built by the international space partners of Earth. When the next Mars transfer window opens, which happens every two years and two months, a number of starships, named the Martian Colonial Fleet, will be waiting in orbit around Earth ready to launch to Mars. The rockets to Mars launch from the US and Russia. As a result, the astronauts, as they've always had to, need to learn both English and Russian. At a technical level, being able to read procedures, checklists, manuals, and communicate back to the mission controls in Russia and the US. The diversity of knowledge from each country and the different ways of doing things proves useful in the challenging environment of space. The diversity has created a new space language, a space creole, originating from the mixture of Russian and English. Certain words from both languages have been combined to describe the alien elements of living in space, in weightlessness, and living on the red planet. The combination of cultures on Mars has also resulted in a collective space culture. For some, it is a tradition to be silent at mealtimes, and talking is saved for after while drinking tea. For others, mealtime is for getting together and talking. The mixing of the Earthian cultures is birthing new traditions, and a new space culture is emerging at the Martian colony.